Hi everybody, this is Jerry and welcome to my channel, Jerry in Stitches, where I share with you my sewing journey. Now, for the past two weeks, I've been really busy sewing up this three-piece uh, outfit. Um, the blazer is the Heather blazer from Friday Pads and Company. The trousers are the Adeline trousers from Vicky Sews. And the cami is, of course, the Ogden cami by True Bias. And what's really special about this three-piece uh, outfit is that I shibori dyed it three ways. So the three techniques of shibori here are first, crumple dyeing, which is actually uh, the easiest of the three techniques. I did it on the lining of the blazer and on the cami. And on the left side of the outfit, this is a folded technique called itajime. It's one of the most basic uh, folding techniques for shibori and on the right side of the garment this is stitched shibori and I'll bring it up closer so that you can see the dye resist actually shows some kind of horse tooth pattern because that's what it looks like horse's teeth here and I used it as stripes uh, for the right side of the garment and this stitch technique is actually the main event for this video um, if you want to skip straight to how this technique is done, you can just uh, go to the timeline that's on the screen right now. Um, but I recommend that you kind of stick around a little bit to understand how to prepare the fabric pieces before dyeing. The fabrics that I used for this outfit are basically just linens. So the main fabric for the blazer and the pants are heavyweight linen from fabricstore.com. And for the lining and the cami, it is their lightest weight linen. And um, I actually made up this outfit so that I can enter their sewing contest. There are still a few more hours to vote for me, so go to the link in the description box below if you want to cast me your vote. Thank you! Okay, enough chit-chat, let's jump into it. The first technique that I'm showing is this folded uh, Itajime Shibori technique. And then later on, I'll be doing the stitch Shibori. And then in the last segment of the video, I'll be showing you the crumple dye. Let's go! To be honest, the most labor-intensive portion of this project is preparing the fabric pieces before dyeing. So for example, here are the two sleeve pieces and when we zoom in for a closer look, you'll see that I've surged or overlocked all the raw edges so that they don't come apart while handling and dyeing. Also, I've hand tacked or hand sewn all the notches and markings, including pleats and darts, to transfer them from paper pattern to fabric. This way, I will not lose these references in the process of dyeing. Next, I draw in by chalk and or by removable marker all the shibori folds that I'm making onto each fabric piece. So these squares measure 2.5 inches uh, per side and I draw them on because pattern matching between the fabric pieces is extremely important for me. Here's the sleeve piece again and I'm going to quickly show you how these accordion folds are done. The first folds will be done on the vertical lines of the sleeve and I'm picking up the center line of the sleeve and making a fold there. Then using an iron, I am pressing this fold. This will help create sharp lines where the folds are. If you drew on your lines with a removable marker, then be careful not to iron them out uh, during this ironing process. When this fold is pressed, I bring it to meet and line up with the second vertical line from this fold. I give it another quick press, then fold the next fold under. These on the sleeve piece happen to be little slivers of folds, so um, working with an iron really helps to give this a very precise finish. Now I am pressing the folds, creasing in the opposite direction. So following the lines drawn on the opposite side of the sleeve piece, I make the crease and press with an iron. Doing this creates the accordion folds that are the most basic kind of fold for producing shibori patterns. There's one last vertical fold to press and then we'll be ready to move on to press the horizontal fold. I find the approximate center horizontal fold um, in the middle of the sleeve piece and fold that under. I press with an iron to sharpen the creases, then continue pressing the other horizontal folds while folding in a way like I am making an accordion. 
Um, I'm doing this according to the lines that I've drawn in, but you can't really see them uh, because they are really faint um, on camera right now. Once I finish folding one side of the sleeve piece, then I continue folding and pressing the other side, starting from center again. When I've made the final fold, I use the iron once again with lots of steam to seal in the creases. When done, I will have this square block of accordion folds. And to bind it securely, I use two pieces of square wooden blocks and place one in the front and one in the back. Then I bind them tightly to the fabric with rubber bands like you see here. And before dyeing, I would end up with all the fabric pieces on the left side of my garment bundled up in accordion squares like you see here. And the edge of these wooden blocks would kind of make a resist pattern right here on the edge of the squares of fabric. And also the rubber bands that you see uh, bound here would also create some kind of resist on the fabric as well. When all the fabric pieces are bound up like this, they are ready to be dyed. The right side of my outfit has a stitched shibori pattern, which is sometimes called horse's tooth pattern because it looks exactly like what it's named after. So the pattern is going to work as stripes uh, on my garment and I've drawn lines two and a half inches apart to help guide my stitching. These are vertical lines that I've drawn on all my fabric pieces on the left side of my garment. And while drawing these lines, I'm also making sure the stripes match top to bottom, right side to left side. So here are all the pattern pieces. I'm showing you all the lines that I've drawn on all my fabric pieces. You can also see that I've stitched on all the pattern markings like darts and pleats, and it's time consuming, but well worth the effort. In addition, all the raw edges have been surged and overlocked. After some experimentation, I've found that the best thread to use for stitched shibori is nylon thread. This thread is very strong and can withstand strong pulling and tugging that is needed for binding the stitches together. I use a long thin needle so that I can make multiple running stitches and a thimble is great to protect your fingers. To draw on your lines onto the fabric pieces, a quilter's ruler like this is very helpful. And to draw the lines themselves, an erasable marker like Pilot Friction pens are ideal for the job. Okay, once I've drawn on the guiding lines, then I'm ready to stitch. I've chosen my stripes to align vertically on my fabric pieces, and I thread the needle with nylon thread and tie a knot at the other end of the thread. As you can see, the nylon thread is very strong. So I think I've tied on my knot. Where is it? Ah, right there. You can see it right there. The first important thing to make sure of when you're doing stitch chibori is that there's a front and back side. So make sure that the right side or front side of the fabric piece is facing up or facing you when working on it. I am now checking that the wrong side of the fabric is facing down. And then when I make the fold, I make sure that the crease is folded pointing towards me. Yes, this way. And you can just do like a finger press to the fold right now um, as you go along. See, there's the fold there. And then I start stitching. Here we go. I am stitching the first line about one quarter inch or three millimeters away from the edge of the fold line. And each stitch is about one centimeter or about half an inch long. And they are also spaced the same distance apart. So I am making multiple stitches and I load them up before I pull the thread through. And I just keep doing the same thing down the whole fold line or the guiding line that I've drawn. Um, so here I am, I'm just doing it again and we'll do this one more time in slow motion so that you can see uh, what it looks like. And this is basically the repetition that you're gonna do for these running stitches to create the stitched shibori. 
okay we don't need to linger on at the regular speed i'm just going to make this go quicker so that we come to the end of the stitching row and i'll show you how to close up this row of running stitches easy peasy all you have to do is make a knot so that the running stitches don't come apart while we're working on it and you can snip that off and this is what it looks like after the first row of stitches are done a row of stitching is actually sufficient to create the horse tooth pattern but I prefer to sew on another parallel row of running stitches to create more resist while dying and I think it creates a better pattern in my opinion. For the second row of parallel stitches, I have to mimic the exact pathway of the needle of the first row. So if the needle goes in this way, I, I cannot um, go through the other way. <laughs> I have to follow the exact pathway of how the need needle went through the first row of stitches. So here we go. That's how the needle went and the distance between the first row and the second row is about a quarter inch or three millimeters apart. And I'm just basically doing the same thing that I did for the first row of stitches and we'll just make this go faster because you don't really need to see the whole uh, process of stitching. Just make sure that they are equally spaced and that the second row is exactly the same as the first row. I really enjoy this uh, part of the stitch shibori process but I'm making it go faster because I'm afraid you guys will be bored. Uh, this is the most fun and meditative for me actually. When we've come to the end of the second row, remember to tie a knot just like we did for the first row and then we can snip off the thread and this is what it looks like when two rows of stitching are done on the folded line and then we can go ahead and fold another line and do the same two rows of running stitches and when we are all done with all the lines this is what the fabric piece looks like all the folded lines have two rows of running stitches and when this is all done we are ready to bind the stitches together First, on one end of the fabric piece, I am going to tie up all the pairs of stitching rows together. This is partly why I think two stitching rows are better than one when creating this shibori pattern because two strands of nylon threads are easier to bind together compared to one single thread to knot up. So basically, I am tying three knots with each pair of running stitch rows at one end. When all the pairs of running stitch rows are securely tied on one end, then I am ready to start pulling the threads on the other end of the fabric piece in order to create the folds, which will in turn provide the dye resist required to produce the horse tooth pattern in this shibori technique. To do this, I hold on to a pair of the ends of the running stitch rows and pull tightly and the fabric will start to fold up, producing small accordion or fan folds on the fold line. Now all that's left to do is to tie up this pair of nylon threads together as tightly as I possibly can, leaving minimal or zero spacing between the folds. I usually tie three knots uh, at least three knots just to make sure that everything is bound up tightly together. Sometimes I also wear gloves as well when binding so that the threads are not cutting into my flesh when I'm trying my best to tie up the nylon threads together. This binding should be repeated on all the other pairs of stitching rows on this end of the fabric piece. And when each row is bound up, I always double check that there's little or no spacing between the folds and sometimes I have to maneuver the folds to keep them aligned. Then I tug at each end of the pairs of threads to make sure that they are securely tied up. And that's done and I am ready to move on to the other rows of stitching. We're gonna go double time now and fast forward this whole binding process because I think you get the idea of what's required to get the binding done. 
I'm impatient to show you what it looks like when all the pairs of stitching rows are bound tightly together. And as you can see, some of the flaps of fabric are going to be bound up together with the accordion folds. And I like to leave them as is instead of pulling them out because they will create an interesting secondary resist pattern. So I wanted to show you the other fabric pieces that I stitched up before binding. Those are the pants pieces. This is the front piece of the blazer. And these are the smaller pieces for both the blazer and the pants. And voila! There you go. Here are all the pieces now all bound up together uh, just before dyeing. And I also wanted to show you all the fabric pieces on the left side of the garment. They're all bound up with uh, pieces of wood and rubber band in their accordion folds. And now they're ready for the dye bath. Here we go. I am using Rit Dye All-Purpose Dye, which requires one teaspoon of dishwashing liquid to go into six liters of almost boiling water. In addition, in goes a half cup of salt, and you should follow the dye instructions for the dye product that you're using. By the way, I'm using the stove top dye method, which I think gives the most vibrant uh, color results. The dye color that I'm using is indigo and for this amount of water, about 120 milliliters of dye color is required. And once it goes in, I also make sure that everything comes out of the measuring cup. I give it a good stir and the dye bath is now ready for the fabric to go in. Usually the fabric has to be dampened before dyeing, but I prefer to leave it dry because I think it works better for shibori patterns. My dye bath was just big enough for all this fabric to be dunked in, so I got lucky this time. <laughs> I left the fabric in to marinate for 30 minutes, then put them in a color fixative bath immediately after while the fabric is still bound up. After that, the fabric pieces were put through a cold rinse till the water ran clear. Then I hand washed the fabric pieces with mild detergent and dried them in the dryer. So this is one of the fabric pieces after dyeing and going through the color fixing bath and the cold water rinse. And here I am cutting the binding somewhere in the middle of the accordion folds. And this is the easiest way of removing the bindings because you just need to uh, easily remove the knotted ends on both sides. And I wanted to show you this reveal because it's one of the most exciting and magical things about tie dyeing when you see the results of all your hard work and remember that um, at this stage it's still wet so the colors are still going to be darker than when it's dry and this fabric piece is ready to be connected with the other fabric pieces it's ready to be sewed up yay Wah! <laughs> When your fabric pieces are all dyed up, then you can go ahead and sew it up according to the sewing instructions of the patterns that you have chosen. And of course, I did not forget the crumple dyeing that I promised. It's gonna come at the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, I hope this inspires you to dye more and to sew more. It's really two amazing superpowers. And if you like this content, please subscribe to my channel, give me a like, ring that bell, follow me on Instagram, and I'll see you real soon. Stay tuned for more pics and that crumple dyeing thingy. Here's a mini tutorial on how to crumple dye. You want to take your ready-made garment and crumple it up into a ball like this. And then with the help of some rubber bands, you want to bind it up into a bundle. Now the tighter you bind, the more dye resist that you're going to have. So you want to keep this in mind when you're binding up your bundle. And you want to prepare your dyes according to dye instructions and put it in a squirt bottle because we're using a squirt bottle technique to apply the dye. Now it's important here not to over dye your crumpled bundles because some dye resist is actually very pretty for this dyeing technique. 
And that's it. Remember to color fix your fabric and then put it through a cold rinse and then launder your fabric and it is done. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time and happy sewing. Happy dyeing, guys.